Stand, stand clear of the closing doors, please. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. It's a lie. Transfer is available. It's available to the Your next and last stop is. Last stop is tuning in to the sub creatures. You're tuning in to the sub we good now you guys got me right all right another episode of subway creatures uh to my right kimmy congdon hey what's up everybody what's going on and our very special guest i'm excited about this one francis ellis comedian Francis Ellis, oh, thank you thank- for coming in, man. It sounded like there was going to be a second thing after. I was the thinking, <laughs> I was thinking about what else I could throw in there. Is di- what, what else would I be able to throw in there? Uh, actor, uh, unemployed would be <laughs> an apt. Well, you're a comedian, right? Aren't they all? The moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for coming, sir. Thank you, thank you guys for having me. This is exciting. Yeah, yeah. we 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 uh we touched base a long time ago, and uh, I I was like, this guy's a no brainer to get on here. Um, same kind of demographics. I feel like you'd be a perfect fit. Uh, not to mention, you're also super talented. As you, uh, for the people who can see right now, you have the keyboard in front of yeah, you. Yeah, this little itty bitty one that I that I think is so dear. This what would is be a good. This? It'd be a nice keyboard to give to your young child. Oh, what man. is this? Is this a keyboard? Is this your keyboard? This no, this isn't mine. This is something that you might typically see uh, for a kid who decides to drop out of Maryland <laughs> to become a DJ. Mm. <laughs> like that's the sort of keyboard he'd be playing around with. And normally, like these keys would um, would play like drum synth stuff like that, right. very basic melodies. There you go for a concert pianist like myself. This is like asking Mario Andretti to drive your Volkswagen. Beetle. Wow. But it's so okay. You, I'm enjoying it. I'm just being a total Gum asshole. Keyboard? <laughs> our guest? Well, it's only Shit. like 12 keys. I mean, it's tough. Anyway. No, but it's going to be great. We're going to have fun with yeah, it. Yeah, and, and, and uh, people are going to see uh, very shortly why that's there. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. Yeah, let's um, do it. Uh, firstly, I just want to kind of get into the viewers of who you actually are, where, where you kind of made a name for yourself. Um, obviously, uh, for most people, they know you from the bar stool scene. Sure. Um, and maybe we can get it out of the way right away. Don't want to spend too much time on it because you've kind of been doing this. I guess I, I, I heard you actually call it this yourself, the redemption tour. The redemption tour. Yeah. Now, why are you on a redemption tour, sir? <laughs> because I need work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to show that I'm, I'm not uh, the perverted man of old and uh, that I'm able to keep it in my pants. And by that, it's like, you Wait, know, what? My, my... Wait, hold on. You're being very... <laughs> so I, I guess There's I should enough... tell this story. Yeah, okay. So really quickly. Uh... From what I hear, you're a child molester right, right now. Right. So you Guilty should clear it up. As charged with the children. I, um... With the children. No, I, I, it wasn't that bad. I, I, uh, I wrote a blog on a Friday about a missing girl in Utah whom I thought was fine um, based on the things I had read. And uh, I kind of missed a couple of the key details in the story. Uh, that signs that were pointing to the fact that she might not be okay. And two hours after I wrote the blog, uh, she was found murdered. And so they fired me for it. And that's, you know, I, I actually heard some of your other interviews. And I mean, not to, st- I'm not justifying it in any sense, but it does make a little bit of sense where you were coming from. The fact that multiple reports said that there was no foul play. Um, I, again, I'm not justifying anything, but when you, when I did hear your side of it, I was kind of like, Oh, you know what? That's kind of important to hear some of those details because that's, yeah. I mean, I told you like a 10 second synopsis of it. I, I, the reality is, uh, that article that said that no foul play was suspected was three days old, mm. but I didn't really pay attention to the timeline of it all. Um, and I think the, the, the thing that made it so bad was that it, it was so shortly before they found her body that my was blog was really, published. really fucking bad. Time. Like if I had been three days before, nobody would have cared, right? Do you think you still would have had a job? Yeah. yeah. And if she's fine, if she's not found dead, right. I still have a job. You know, there's right. so many like 
fu- messed up variables that that worked in my, against me. Yeah, and I mean, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I feel like it's kind of hard to get fired from Barstool if you're. Yeah, I think it was a tough week. Uh, there, they were in the news for the HBO expose on real sports that yeah. was kind of bad publicity and. In moments like that, everyone kind of bunkers down and, and is like, all right, let's be careful this week. Yeah, and I mean, you know probably better than anyone. And and I've been down similar roads where, you know, you are you may get a little bit of scrutiny for things you post or things you say. And honestly, the attention span of people, it's its the next day. Mm-hmm. It's almost gone. And, yeah. Um, yeah, nobody cared in, almost immediately, and and I don't. I think that's a because of people. Most people realized this was just a careless error, and not some indictment of my character. Right, and uh, that that it wasn't a pattern of evil behavior. Right. There weren't like forty other dead girls that came out of the woodwork and were like, "He also wrote about me," you know? <laughs> right. So nobody yeah. cared, and then Jeffrey Epstein, like all that shit broke a couple days after, and everyone was like, "That's worse." So. <laughs> Yeah. Thank God for child I know. What a great dude. <laughs> I mean, if, if he were alive, I would ask him to be godfather of my adult children. Well, what do you... All right. So there was another part of this story, which I actually... If there was anything funny that came of this, uh, it was the story that I heard you tell about what happened later that day. Oh, yeah. Can you tell that real quick? Yeah. So it was a pretty tumultuous day. Uh, I, I, wrote, I published the blog around like 11 a.m. or something. And then, you know, nothing happened for a few hours. And then they found a murder suspect at t- like 2 or 3 p.m. Mm-hmm. And then at like 4 p.m., they found her body. I took the blog down at like 2.30 once they had the suspect because I was like, ah, this looks less promising than i had hoped and so what i don't understand the whole problem you wrote about a girl and you said that she was alive and she wasn't well like in it i i wrote some jokes okay i wrote i mean look I'm you with wrote you. jokes you didn't realize she was dead and then people were like that's fucked up she was dead you wrote those jokes and then you had to take them down fuck everybody this is the comedian's response though and i'm i'm with you because we are she of doesn't that care Ill. That's true. Legally, I found this out. I was like, oh, man, is the family going to sue me? And the lawyer was like, great news for you. You can't defame a dead person. Did you know that? Great. I I learned that just now. Yeah. Yeah, because I just spent on my last podcast 40 minutes shitting on Stephen Hawking. (laughs) Hard. (laughs) Thank God. Did you know he was on Epstein's Island? Uh, no, but I did know that he was like a sexual, like he ha- always had he, yeah, they, There's pictures of yes. him on the island and me and Alex were talking about on our podcast earlier how terrifying it must have been for the little boy <laughs> to like be, it was like a jigsaw. He comes like in the room and he's like, do you want to play a game? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That'd also be tough too though, like to be Stephen Hawking's photographer because he can't take a selfie. No. <laughs> So he's got to have somebody with him all the time. Right. And it's like, how do I look? Let me look. No, take another. Dude, you're you're never going to do better than this. <laughs> Your face is the same in there every single... Look at so him. we oh, now right. have a picture. On Little St. James. Is that what it's called? Little St. James? Is that... It's is... gross that it says little in it, in mm. the name of the mm. island. It's really gross. But yeah, look at them all. <laughs> wow. Who who are the other people? It's also in the Virgin Islands. Oh. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I see what you did yeah. there. Okay. Ugh. Um, I don't want to detract too far from the story because uh okay, so Oh yeah. So, so now I, you're, you're all that shit happened and then are we allowed to swear on this? I would Oh yeah, baby. Okay. Oh yeah. Um and then uh I was on I was going um to Pennsylvania that weekend to meet my girlfriend's parents for the first time. And uh I was on the train down to lovely bucolic uh, New Hope, Pennsylvania. And um, I got a phone call from my boss telling me I was fired. <laughs> like for 20 minutes jokes? for meeting my parents, or my girlfriend's parents for the first time. There's only two ways to get fired from Barstools that and not raping a girl. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Too mean? Okay. Oh. Well, sorry, she just sorry. wants to prove a point right now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Barstool. I guess I'm probably not going to get hired there anytime soon. Well, no. You either. I, I quit. <laughs> <Twins>. <laughs> no, no. Um, so now you're showing up to meet your girlfriend's parents. And 
also explain to them that you're unemployed and why you're unemployed. Yes. Yeah, I walked into the dinner table. There were like nine of them there. It was a big family gathering. <laughs> They're like, so son, tell me about your work. <laughs> yes. And the, her, her stepdad is a, a pilot. So he, this guy never steps out of line. You know, he's never late for anything. Plays the world by the book. He's like, nice to meet you. Where are you? Uh, what happened? Why, why do you look that way? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I just got some bad news, man. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Uh, are we sleeping in the same bed or should I stay elsewhere? And um, and they were pretty cool. I mean, honestly, they were pretty cool. But it was a tough story to tell. Just At the, the time, it was like, it was, you know, I had the, the, the articles that came out that night on the, on the hate mongering websites or the anger mongering websites were that I had slut shamed a dead girl. <laughs> that should be a children's book. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't slut shame the dead girl. <laughs> oh, man. It's a Ber um, Berenstein Bears book. <laughs> just so I, I kind of get a feel for, for her parents, would they have, even if you had a job, were they going to let you sleep in the same room? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're pretty, okay. they're, I guess you could say progressive. Okay. Because that, that, that helps me paint a picture right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, they weren't super strict. I mean, the, yeah. the pilot thing is funny, but it's not. He was cool. They were cool. They were supportive. Yeah, well, ex especially having to explain that, like, hi, nice to meet you. Um, not only did I get fired, but here's why, and you can probably read about it online right now. Oh, yeah. The Washington Post wrote about the story, me, uh, Daily Mail, Fox News, ABC News, just Deadspin, Daily anything. News. And that, I mean, that's not, that's not news. Like, that, it's news what happened with her, but this isn't, you know, that shouldn't be news. Um, well, I mean, Barstool tends to drum up a lot of headlines. Well, that's exactly what You've it been is. following all this stuff today. Yeah. So what happened today? So today was a pretty epic day for Barstool okay. in the news. I now this is this is something where the the owner uh, Portnoy is actually sometimes he he can be a fucking genius. He's like an Andy Kaufman yeah. in real life. Okay. Um. He they were talking about uni unionizing. Well, uh, there the other there were other media websites like Gawker. Yep. I, I don't know exactly what yep. it was. The uh, the Ringer. Which I think is uh, Bill Simmons's company mm -hmm. uh, that had their employees unionized. Okay. The writers, and then Dave wrote that if anyone at Barstool wanted to ever threaten to unionize, he would fire them on the spot or something like uh, that. Right. Something like that. I don't want to get in trouble for no, no. But or but yes. And ultimately, what happened was this got picked up by not only multiple. Uh, news and media outlets, but then AOC got involved. Yeah. Donald Trump Whoa. Jr. got involved. Whoa. And when those two are both commenting on a barstool post, yeah, the, post. the internet, the internet breaks. Yeah. And I think I saw something earlier: three hundred and fifty-seven million impressions. This generated yeah, it was the number one story trending on yeah Twitter, which apparently equals seven million dollars in free media PR. It's crazy. So it's crazy how good he is at this because he does this like he's five times Kaufman. a year. Yeah. So you work there. Is this something that was planned out? Uh, I would say this. I don't think Dave always knows how well it's going to go. Right. I think he shoots some shots, but I think that there is nobody who is more who has a higher percentage yes. of accuracy if the goal is uh, creating a massive amount of publicity and draw bringing eyes to the website. Right. I don't think... I mean, obviously, this probably still would have gotten the press that it did, but if AOC and uh, yeah. Trump Jr. did not comment... I mean, again, when you have the two of them involved and they're talking about Barstool, yeah. I mean, that's... That right there, it just lends a huge legitimacy to the company. Exactly. Um, and what AOC said was, you know, uh, if your boss, she responded to Dave's tweet and like or tweet quote tweeted it and said, uh, uh, if your boss threatens to fire you for unionizing, he is in violation of. And then she cited a law and said, um, you know, you can sue. Uh, there's nothing wrong with workers uh, trying to improve their working conditions right. through unionizing. Okay. And then Trump Jr. Well, he then he responded to her. 
uh, Dave Portner responded saying, welcome to the Thunderdome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. And so Trump Jr. fucking hopped on that bandwagon real quick. Yeah. And Trump Jr. said, uh, if you're, if you know, it's amazing that AOC, like, I, I don't know what it was. He he was on Dave's side. He, he said like, something like, you, I, you made a huge mistake. Yeah, don't stir the pot yeah. with, with Dave Portner right. at Barstow Sports. Right. Yeah, something like and that. all of a sudden, we're off to the races, and this thing is now the number one trending thing on Twitter, and yeah. it's all people we're talking about today because, you know, even though it was, you know, a huge troll by Barstool, um, everyone was buying it. Yeah, but but the thing is, is that it's like it probably wasn't really a troll. Like you never know what was in his mind. It's possible he meant it, but he never thought it would be that big of a deal. And then it turns into a troll. I guess that's that's another question I had for you because it, are there is there a system because of the way bar stools set up and the and how much controversy they can stir up a lot of the time? Is there a checks and balance system over there where you know someone might say, hey? Dave, you know, you, you really can get sued. You better know what, what you're doing right now. Or is it just something that fell into his lap this way? Well, honestly, Barstool gets sued constantly. Constantly. But their parody law is so uh, so comprehensive and protective that as long as Barstool is able to say that everything that they do is done for humor um, and, and for the sake of entertainment, they're pretty much going to be able to get away with it. Wow. I mean, that's that's a good thing. And I'm glad that a precedent hasn't been set, you know, contrary to Well, but I, it I'm, for you? I'm the example, right? Yeah. I'm the counter example. But, but to exactly it all. why I'm wondering, like, you know, I that really shows how much their hands were tied in that situation. Because, I mean, they just push the envelope and they push it and push it and push it. And, you Look, know, they, they said their hands were tied. They, you know. He just posted this 30 minutes ago to the Daily Beasts union so dave portney i will come crush your union just for fun <laughs> saying that to the daily beast <laughs> and that's he you know he's just going to keep going with this on well the daily beast i i, I don't I, they're the ones that came after me they're the ones that said i slut shamed a dead girl and nobody had nobody who read my article would have ever thought that and also i wasn't i thought she was alive so they're just they're kind of just i don't even i don't even, i don't like to even name them right right it's so let me ask you so because you're in the comedy world mm. i mean is there you know as when it comes to kind of uh not necessarily censorship but kind of pushing the envelope too far is there and kim feel free to jump in on this as well is there is there a line or is everything free game in your opinions wait what say that again is there a line that you draw somewhere in the comedy world or is everything free game everything's your free game everything's free game everything's free game okay I, I'm completely with Kim. The problem is comedians are the ones who believe that. And we're not... Yeah, because it's our job. No, I know. But like, uh, unfortunately, you know, if you're... Like, let's use a comedy club as a, an example, right? There's six comedians on a lineup, 150 people in the room. Mm -hmm. Six people believe that you can say anything mm -hmm. as long as it's funny. Okay. And then 150 people... Are all have, have slightly different views. Sure. Right? 150 people, one person thinks everything's fair game, but don't make fun of 9-11. Another person thinks everything is fair game, don't make fun of the Holocaust. Another person thinks everything is fair game, don't make fun of black people. I literally have all those in my set right now. Yeah. <laughs> so You're going to kill. It's, it's like there isn't actually a consensus. Everybody is sensitive about their one issue right. that's why there right. can't be a line because there's right. always going to be something that's why there cannot be a line anything you bring up someone's going to be offended by it right and i think so. i think and and i think you guys are correct by kind of having the mentality where exactly what you just said you know you, you can't tiptoe around anything because no matter what you do someone's going to be offended and dude even if you I've do a clean that, set i'm offended <laughs> how right. boring and, and i and i've learned trust me i've learned that through this account as well, through Subway Creatures. I mean, no matter what you post, no matter what you say in a caption, someone, I mean, do you remember, we posted a video on this account of a guy who was braiding his daughter's hair. It was a, it was a black guy braiding his daughter's hair on the train. And I wrote something along the lines of this is the father of the year because it's on a moving train and he's 
braiding his daughter's hair on the way to school. Somehow that was offensive to a certain group of women who were extremely pissed off that they didn't get credit for braiding their daughter's hair on the train. Why is this guy getting acclimates when, you know, we do this on a daily basis? And yeah. it's just like, come on. Like, that was, that was an example yeah. that I remember hearing. And I was just like, holy shit. I can't believe. I thought that this was a great, wholesome video. Yeah. And somehow they turned it into something else. And again, I think another problem is that every once in a while you have one or two people who will say something. And it makes it seem like they're speaking for this huge group and they're really not. Most of the times, most of the time the people that are getting offended don't even really believe in what they're getting offended over. Like they're just, I agree. they're just 100%. fucking, yeah. I'm telling you right now, like most of the people that get offended are just sad, lonely people that want to be a part of a group. If yeah. you get offended by everything, if you get offended and like are always posting on Facebook about like f- shit not being right or fair, just make a friend and go out and like yeah. go do something. I agree. Um, I think this is also a great segue into your old podcast, which a friend of mine told me to listen to, and I thought it was fucking hilarious. Oh. It was called Offended, the, the musical. musical. Yeah. We and did an improvised musical podcast about being offended. That's fun. And yeah. I listened to a bunch of it, and again, it almost seemed like nothing was off limits. Yeah. But the fact that you guys were kind of doing this on the fly, I thought was fucking hilarious. Um is that no longer up or is it was that we a did a, we thing did a or was season that... of it um both of us were pretty busy so it was kind of hard to keep going so we did like 17 episodes we, um and we would do three songs per episode and and then we both needed to kind of go catch up on other things and we just never got back to it it had a cult following it was like beloved by the you know however small the group was that listened yeah. to it but um the guy I did it with is a is a world ch- a, a national champion battle rapper. Hmm. Oh my god! And should have got him. You too. should you should watch some of the clips. Like go down the YouTube rabbit hole of Roan. Yep. R O N E battle rap champion. It's the most brilliant lyrics I've ever seen. He's this stringy white dude with a very uh, cute face, and he's in these like <laughs> tough looking places. <laughs> With surrounded by, but he's holding his own. It sounds and he's like. he's dominating. Yeah, he wins the whole thing. Fuck all the time. I don't need to watch it. He's unbelievable. Yeah, That's we actually him. we actually have a video right now. Uh, can guys, can we play a, play a clip of this? Yeah. You would think he was dead wrong. I mean, as far as food, what we got today? Lobster face, pasta plate. He's black and Islamic. What the fuck is he? A chocolate shake? I mean, you're too fat to walk over subway grates but you're in the hall of fame with jared as the subway grates i mean fucking your blood pressure is higher than the price of a brick you are addicted to steaks if we're talking life on the strip we would need a whole tray to put ice on your wrist and your fingers are too fat so you fucking type with a stick but it's really severe hold on But fuck jokes. I'll use reality to show that they're lame. The joke would be, you probably need two seats whenever you sit on an airplane. (laughs) The reality would be, if you sat next to me on an airplane, it wouldn't ruin my night. It wouldn't ruin my flight. It would ruin my life. (laughs) His coming down this, him coming down the aisle with hard steps and short breath. Please, God, don't let him sit here. I'd be praying with palms clenched. Sit down and you're drenched from your breast to your forehead. Fuck two seats. Lard fest could only fit a park bench. In case of emergency landing, he'd need an extra large vest. If he has the window seat, the sun's eclipsed by your chest, and I'd be hard pressed. I'd be hard pressed to stay meta like our test, because this guy can't keep his side fat off of the armrest. I mean, <laughs> so, um, so clearly, you guys. I can only imagine you guys getting together because when fun. you play the keyboard or the piano, you're also kind of freestyling that as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what do you say we bring back the offended sure. podcast real well, we've quick? We've been telling oh, my shit. story a little bit and I've been, I'm going to, I've been working on a new song, so this is not <clears throat> improvised, but, uh, I will give you a couple bars of this. Okay. How about, and then afterwards, and then, we can do some and then afterwards, stuff. let's do some other stuff with that. I'm looking forward to this. I was fired for writing about a dead girl. I'd 
didn't think that it would cause a stir. But the Washington Post and the Daily Mail wrote my story in grim detail, and the only person who'd have traded with me was her. <laughs> So I packed my bags and headed off to France With my tightest, <laughs> my girlfriend and my tightest pair of pants <laughs> We ate fondue and drank from fountains Swam in lakes and hiked the mountains As the internet moved on to Jeffrey Epstein <laughs> When I was 17, I got pulled over for speeding. I was doing 60 in a 35. When the cop asked for my license, I said I'm late to tutor blind kids. And he winked at me and said, I'll let it slide. He knew my dad. <laughs> Within a week I had forgiveness I've never tested positive I'm Sorry, positive for syphilis I guess, I guess it's just a privilege To be me It's kind of tough, man. All this right. this <laughs> keyboard. A song tough. about white privilege, though. You know, Kim loved every I, minute. I of really that. did like that. Yeah, I um, learned it a little better. So what I was thinking, and I know that you're good at not only you know improvising on both. So what if me and Kim just kind of throw maybe like a buzzword at you? Yeah, and okay. we could just do something <laughs> with that. Yeah, we could do that, or we could also have you two just tell like a story from your lives. And I could try to weave that into a song. Ooh, a story. The story from my life. Kim, Kim's anything, got a lot of stories. Has anything happened to you okay. today? What was the worst thing that happened to you today? The today? moment today where you thought, Jesus Christ, really? Like, is this for real happening? Well, nothing really terrible happened today except for I was supposed to, you know, when you're driving through the e-pass and you don't have, or you don't have cash for the toll and they give you the ticket to mail in. I just forgot today. And today you was forgot the, to mail in the ticket. It was the last day to mail in my ticket. Huh. <laughs> That's the worst part of my day. I had a really good day. <laughs> I got to tell you, I got a massage. I did podcasts. I'm wow. fucking, I have a couple shows. Life's okay. Good. But if you want to write about something terrible, the first time um, I went down on a guy, I made him wear a condom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. I like the um I like the toll stuff. <laughs> the toll stuff is interesting. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> well, let me think for a second. So, uh I just want to make sure I have the particulars right. So, you were driving, where were you when you I was heading to DC to do a show. Okay. Um and you Took went a through a toll, turn. but you didn't have the money to pay for it. Took a wrong turn trying to find a Taco Bell. And then the wrong turn led me to a six seventy five dollar toll. Six dollar and seventy five cents. And I didn't have any cash because I didn't plan on going on toll. I had to go through the toll, then instantly turn around and then go through the toll again. And now I have to pay those two. And Is was... there anything else? Wow. Okay. That's good stuff. And today you forgot to pay the to send the paperwork. Today in. was the fifth day. It says you have to pay it within five days of passing the toll. And I was like, I gotta do this today. And then I went and got a massage instead. Okay. thinking here Kim went down to our nation's capital to do shows oh but she got a little hungry on the way So she looked up a little Mexican food on Google Maps <laughs> And the only thing she found was Taco Bell And she said, I gotta have my cheesy gordita crunch That's what I ordered I gotta have it right away, I don't care I'm gonna turn my Hyundai Elantra around 
she didn't see the toll until it was too late and she went right through because that's something that women do <laughs> and a week later the tax man came a calling oh, and said you gotta pay a 75 dollar fine she said i declined because i'm a girl <laughs> and i get away with whatever i want there are no consequences when you're not born with a y chromosome <laughs> you guys have anything you want to add I have a completely different story if we want to <laughs> we're gonna do that um, That was gorgeous. That was, that was great. That was, just that was amazing. Nonsense. Yeah. Pure nonsense. I like how I like how um but it all you called sense. Taco Bell Mexican food. Is it not Mexican food? I mean it's barely food. What do they <laughs> profess? What nationality they are they say Mexican for? But they say Mexican Your point like is that when it's white girls are food, doing Cinco right? de Mayo. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's like that Mexican. <laughs> Um, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. that I was. I love it. It's been a while. I'm gonna hit the old, the old pen. Is that okay? Is that weed? Yeah. Get out. Oh. Not in here. <laughs> I've been on. Unless I'm, you're sharing. Yeah, I'm, am I sharing? <laughs> I'm sharing. Oh wow. This this might actually uh, this might even get better somehow. This will help. This will help. All right, uh, Francis. Talk to me. There was a uh, point in high school. I was on a family vacation. I like it better already. And I. Uh, I decided to go with my cousin. He had, uh, have you ever smoked sativa? Yeah, of course. You said it like it was DMT. <laughs> well, it kind of fell off. Like it was like around and then like it kind of just went away. You mean salvia. Away. Is it salvia? Yeah. Oh. Sorry, salvia. That's oh, what I okay. meant. Sativa. Yeah, what the fuck? Of course. I was like, I, was like, I feel like we're doing that right <laughs> yeah. now. Like, is this we are. Have you ever smoked the weed? Uh, yeah, thank you, Alex. Yeah, that that's, was, exactly, was, that's exactly what I meant. Way. That's exactly are what I meant. Are you familiar with the pots? <laughs> The pots and pans? Yes. So um, we went and smoked it outside. Salvia. Salvia. It's wow. a very different animal. It, have you? All right. Have you smoked salvia? I have smoked salvia. So we, were, we smoked it inside this like outdoor shower. Immediately started seeing people. And they had no bottom to them. They just kept going down and down. And they were all surrounding me. And they were all pointing and laughing. So I walked out of the... I walked out of the shower, out of the, the outdoor shower, and inside immediately, and just immediately started taking my clothes off because I was profusely sweating for whatever reason. Turns out my f entire family, which is about, on this vacation, is like 30 people in a, in a huge house, <laughs> is having movie night right there, and I am stripping down, <laughs> and I'm yelling, it's the drugs that's doing it to me. <laughs> I am going to be fine. Oh, no. <laughs> That's that's what you get to work with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's already very fitting. Yeah. Rick at the family reunion hit the salvia pen and said, Where are the men without the torsos that go on forever into the ground? Did I get that right? <laughs> you did. And then he started feeling hot. He said, am I real or am I not? He couldn't tell between the physical world and all he wanted was a nice little girl <laughs> to cuddle up <laughs> with and eat some meal with his family to know what was real he wanted a plate with some vegetables instead he got a tribe of angry ghouls <laughs> i don't know so he started taking off his clothing as fast as he could then he had wood and all his family members said rick what's wrong i don't like your dong and he said it's the drugs that's doing it to me 
It's the drugs that's ruling over me. My name's Rick and I'm drooling, you see. Send somebody to bring me an IV. I'm freaking out, I'm tripping on my balls. I don't have a spot or don't hold my calls. My name's Rick and I'm on Salvia. Didn't know the effects. It's way stronger. Can somebody please have sex with me? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You don't, no, you know what I liked? I like that you, you know, it started kind of slow, and then right when I started tripping hard is when it just started I, going I crazy. I felt the intensity yeah. of yeah. the trip. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. feel it. That was, uh, that was, listen, thank you for doing that. It was very impressive, and, you know, again, this was all improvised. It's not like you came in no, I know. planning on, uh, we did not talk I about it. I like when you rhyme vegetables with goals. <laughs> did I say goals? I was trying to say ghouls. I was doing a little <laughs> you, rhyming you know, license there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing a little license. You tried to do it like uh, how Biggie does it? Uh, yeah, because he yeah, slant rhymes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or who is it? T-Pain, Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, borrowing. Yeah, yeah Leaning exactly. a lot on some syllables. Oh, yeah. yeah. I it's like fine, it. Though. People, people don't that even That show's care. fire. Yeah, it was. Um, so let me ask you, what's what's next for Francis House? What do you got coming up? Like, what are you, what are you doing now? Uh, great question. Well, a lot of this, you know, a lot of this stuff, just uh, hopping on podcasts and improvising songs about Salvia. Uh, mm -hmm. And no, I've got uh, I've got my podcast, which is called Oops, the podcast. It's about mistakes, fuck ups, career enders, marriage enders, cool. uh, things that really cost people a great deal. Can you give us like a little glimpse into like an example of maybe a story or a guess that you had that would fit? That category. Right. So this isn't a guess we had, but it's someone that I really want to get. There was this guy. He's a comedian, super, like, super talented comic. And for years, he would jerk off in front of women. Carlos Mencia. Ah, no, that was, that's the Mexican thing again, mm, okay. right? Well, this guy was Mexican, right? <laughs> oh, he was. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just never would have known it. And I wanted to have a guy, I wanted to have this guy on to tell his side of the story. Wow. You know, because that's the kind of thing I want to hear about. I think the rest of the whole world wants to hear yeah, that. Yeah, so he's story. not going to choose our our little podcast. But in theory, somebody like him, Billy Bush would be another good example. Have you reached out to any of these people in any capacity? I don't, I, I don't know what Billy Bush's Instagram DM <laughs> Is this at is all Billy I Bush, got? At, <laughs> yeah, at Billy Bush. We don't exactly have a booker. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're in my apartment. Um, no, but then we've had you know we've had great com. We've had uh, Ashley Hesseltine came on and talked about the f the three DUIs that she's gotten, and what she learned from them, how she navigated <clears throat> that, how she kind of like uh, I, in an ideal world, it's going to be mistakes that um, people in the public eye have made, and mm. how the public reacted to them based on it's what time podcast. it was. Like, like yeah, that, like yeah. the year can really affect that. What's going I really on? Really like that. You yeah, know who the would times because really yours. We we talked about how much yours is such perfect, not perfect. I guess worst timing in the world, but it was that timing nonetheless of when your blog came out. Right when you know, so that's a huge. That plays a huge role in it. You know who would be a really good guest? That girl that tweeted um, she was going to Africa for her like internship. We we absolutely want to have her. Oh, yeah, because yeah, that she, shit was crazy. She was like joking, and then yeah. she tweeted something like. Oof. Going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white, haha. -ha, and then turned her phone off. <laughs> it like, went like turned her phone off, got on the plane, got off the plane, and was. But it was like sarcasm. Like it was a woke tweet. She was being sarcastic. Like that's white. What what white people think? You know what I'm saying? Like. Right. And her she fucking would be a, would be everything ended. You know, here's the thing that's amazing about all of this. This is something I've learned. Uh, there is. The leash on comedians and creators is longer or shorter based on the uh, avenue b down which you're putting out your work. So you have more leeway in stand-up because okay. people can see you smiling. They can hear the audience laughing. Clearly, it's mm -hmm. a joke, right? Right. right? You also have more leeway in podcasting because people can hear the tone of your voice. And they can hear more intention. You have the least amount of leeway in the written word. Of course. In things that you write on the internet. Because you're writing it in ink. Yeah. It is indelible in the internet. Oh, they're going to get me. And, uh, and, and nobody, everyone reads it in their own pissed off, angry, of defensive voice. 
imagine if like Lewis Black were reading angry t- like yelling tweets at you that's a good idea for or concept, who's the guy yeah. that does info wars that guy alex jones yeah alex jones like that's how they read these tweets right or these lines in these blogs it, the same goes for text messages i mean how many times have you read yeah. a text and you're like how many times have i gotten a text from kim and i'm like oh how do i'm I so this? i yeah do i, I am i'll let I'll, I'll, I'll say k <laughs> yeah i'm cold in a text right so cold oh my god i'm like i, just don't, I don't like to text period right now no no, no, no. i don't like to text i want bitch. the quickest <laughs> response it's like hey are we doing this yep that's it yeah right not like, like yeah, yeah man said yup with a period who has who has time to be like yeah man be right there can't wait it's like oh i don't have I, I gave you a yup i'll be there it's all the it's the <laughs> punctuation yep. really it yeah, is it's where it's that softens the but you're right so it, it it throws things off a lot and especially when it comes to tweets people are like they don't know tone necessarily right. i i automatically if it's from a parody account or a, a comedian just fucking come on you, you gotta know yeah, this person's not necessarily serious, but mm. they, yes, it gets people into trouble all the time. <clears throat> yeah. uh, which I love the concept of that podcast. It's called Oops. Yeah, Oops, the podcast. Cool, that's and uh, it's once a week great on idea. Thursdays. We might add more, um, and that's what I'm doing with Julio Gallarotti. There you go. Did you guys know him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a good yeah, dude. Yeah, Julio. Um, so I got that going, and then um, I'm going to be writing somewhere. I don't know where yet. Nice, but it'll end up somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you will. I went to L.A. You guys ever been out there? Mm-hmm. I've heard of it. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about L.A.? Obsessed. See, I'm the opposite. Obsessed I'm I'm it. kind of like a week is long enough for me. I'm like, okay, it's time to go back now. I judge people that don't like it. <laughs> I like Rick less because he doesn't like L.A. I what I, is it I, that I you love you. so much about? It? I, I like you. how clean it is. I like that there's privacy. I like that you can like be healthy. I like that you can smell like the air and it not have like the smell of human shit in it i like that you can drive a car i like that there's not a subway thing i like that there is like a clean ocean i mean those are nice things (laughs) those are nice things those are very good reasons i agree i think that the people could go Uh (laughs) right but i mean whatever Here's the thing. I, I love what you said about the outdoors. And I didn't really get enough time to explore that last week. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have also found that if you're willing to work for it, you can get decent outdoor stuff here in New York City. I know, well, but yeah. just like everything else, you got to work for and it. And also so not hard. for nothing, but you, you mentioned the people can go, but everything else. Of course, everything else is great out there. It's the people that fucking kill it for me. Right, but the people here aren't fucking sunshines and roses either. No, but if I had, if if that's what I'm gonna be, so you're just, cho- I, I mean, you're just choosing one. bad weather, re- a lot of traffic, no privacy. It's everything smells. And the restaurants are so dirty here. That's the truth. And LA, and we're just talking about LA, LA though, right? Not other places in California, like well, just, just LA, right? Yeah, yeah. Like okay. in LA, nobody eats in a B restaurant. It's just unheard of here. If it's like it's a C, I'm like, okay, good. We found a nice one. <laughs> Like it's cre it's like every single aspect is just a little dirtier and grosser. Yeah. I, I makes us better people. That's I what they think say. You were kidding, but I would never eat in a sea restaurant. No, I'm serious. <laughs> oh God. I don't I don't know the last time I've eaten in a bee. If I've people ever eaten eat in a bee, bee you it's have do you know how hard accident. it is to get a bee? Like it's you have really be, fucking hard. Yeah. You have to really have a shitty establishment to get That's a That's not bee. true. Oh yeah, definitely. That's not true. Oh fuck yeah. I worked in a bar for a year. <laughs> And uh, I will say that in order to make sure that they got the A, uh, there were a lot of protocol issues that we had to like follow. It was, it was you had to be pretty clean in right. the bar because if they went to B, it would crush their business. Right. Nobody goes into B's. Um, <clears throat> valid point. So, so wait, what's your take on it then? Or are you? I think you both make decent points. Um, I like the ocean. The problem I have is that it's so far away, the, the, that whole area, unless you live over there, in which case, you know, to get to the comedy store is like an hour. And it, it's so far away, I find it prohibitively far away. The ocean is prohibitively far away from West Hollywood. You're not going to go out there unless you're like going to camp out there for the weekend. Not true. <laughs> Kim is getting so fucking. I would weird. go every it, it's, Saturday. It's six hours a day that's in the car. That's not true. That's not LA. true. It's six hours if you go from two to five p.m. So get your ass up early and go to the beach at nine a.m. Like a fucking. No, but I'm adult. saying I'm saying on a given day out there, 
and granted I was only there for four days, but every day I had like, I don't know, I'd have a spot and I'd have two meetings. Right. And they would be, one would be in Burbank and then the other would be in Beverly Hills. The driving's not, but you know what the good part about driving in LA and being stuck in traffic is you can smoke weed while you're in the car. Why can't you do that wherever wherever you want? Because you can't mm. really do that here. You can't smoke weed on the train while you're traveling. I passed three separate people smoking weed on the sidewalk when I was okay, walking Okay, while you're tra- on a train, when you're traveling, when you're going places. You have no cell phone service. Someone's probably going to kill you and you can't escape the train. You can't smoke. You can't do shit. You're sitting on people's germs. It's much better to sit in your own car and sit in a little bit of traffic and listen to fucking... I used to listen to my sets in traffic. I would just listen to my sets for three hours while I was driving. And I'd be like, well, I'm just going to make this work. You can't do anything on a train. Hmm. Besides I mean, read I could, a dumb book. I could argue you all day, but I think you have a set, don't you? Yeah, yeah, what side? Oh, you got a oh nice. <laughs> that place is good. No, no, I no, used no. to I've I, uh, done a couple spots at West Side Comedy Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that place. I do. It's I really like it dark. I know. It's really dark. I know. There. Um but yeah, but I gotta run. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for Thanks, Thank Kim. You. Thank you. It was so much fun. Thank Sorry you for singing late. about my ticket. It's okay. Yeah. We'll have uh, Francis do your shameless plugging for oh, you. Oh, thank you. Thank Sweet. you. Yeah. All right. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Kim Congdon. Fucking No, he's going to do it for you. Okay. He's going to do it you for you. You can just make up a fact. I <laughs> exactly. That's what I was thinking. All right, Francis. Hey, good you. to see you, Kim. Bye. So, Francis, Bye. we actually have some Subway stuff to talk about. Yeah, great. Uh, in, our, in our last 10, 15 minutes here. Is it possible that I could get a glass of water or a cup of water? Thank you. What do you have? Cotton mouth from I'm thirsty. I'm always thirsty. I exercise all the time. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> God. How, do, how douchey is that? <laughs> That's tough. All right. What do we got? Subway stuff. All right. We got some stuff. We got a, uh, a situation in Madrid and this guy was on a platform and he was kicked in front of a train. This is probably one of my ultimate fears. Um, standing down on the platforms. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm always looking around me. Yeah, you got to. You just never fucking know. Dude, this happens, man. I worked that, at, how, how often do you read about this? And I worked at the district attorney's office as a paralegal for a year, and it was all the street crimes that we, we dealt with. And people, crazy people, would push normal civilians in front of trains frequently. Uh, it, it happens a lot. Yeah. Um, we actually have video of this. Oh wow, great. Yeah. So let's let's get this. Watch the top of the screen here. The guy standing on the platform right when the train's coming in. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Did he die? No. So we would never show it if he died, at least not for the regular show. Yeah, Yeah, we would get in a little bit of trouble. But this guy actually survived. Now, guys, we could play it back one more time. If you notice when he falls, he runs under the platform. You see, oh, he dives under. I thought he was just getting like mangled by the wheels. Uh, that's what I originally thought. And then I read the article and they're like, no, he actually, when the train left the station, he popped back up. But watch the reaction of everyone else on the platform. They think they think for sure he just got squashed. Oh, yeah. Yo, wait, w- go back one more time to the kick. I got to see this kick again. Why does this guy do this? So according to the article, it turns out this guy is just an asshole. He just, he's gotten in trouble in the past. And he, there was, it was unprovoked. There was no reason for him to do this. But how about the fucking instincts of this guy getting pushed and immediately not getting run over and to go under the platform? That was very. Impressive. I don't understand how he. It was almost as if he knew it was coming. My, right. I always look that at the little. I know you know the trough under yep. in the middle. Yep. Because you can lie down flat. Would that be your move? Uh, yeah, that's all you got. Well, not true. There are a couple spots on the wall where you can kind of like, they're like indented where you can kind of like jump into, but you're not going to have that kind of time. But are you talking about in, in the middle of the subway? No, you're talking about the middle, right? Like the trough right in the middle, right? Yeah. Between the tracks? No, 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 no. Yeah, Between the tracks of the oncoming yes. train. Yes. Yes. I'm talking about on the wall on the far side. Sometimes there are these indents where you can like stand inside the wall. Yeah, but th- that means that you have to cross the third rail. I mean, you are you are got a train coming at you. Are you really thinking about... I guess not. Yeah. But that's why I, even more, I'm like the instincts of this guy to know, almost like he, this has happened to him before. It's crazy. I applaud it's him. Really athletic. He's yeah. a scurrier. He scurried. <laughs> yes. That was a scurry, like a Brianna scurry. 
Um, yeah, and the other thing is this guy was arrested for attempted manslaughter. Not even attempted murder, attempted manslaughter. Well, you can't really attempt manslaughter now, can you? No. Because ex- manslaughter, by definition, is accidental right. murder. Right. Exactly. So it's like if I'm attempting to accidentally murder someone, there's an, that's murder. That was that also blew my mind when that's I ridiculous. was reading that. That's got it. That's Spain. That's a Spain thing. Did not make. Any I don't even know what they're doing as a country. <laughs> um, does well, anyone? Does anyone? Nobody talks about Spain anymore. No. Do you know what I mean? Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you anything. When was the last time? When was the last time you heard something good about Spain? <sighs> that's a good question. People seem to like Ibiza a lot. Yeah, but here's the problem. You know who likes people? I was just there. I had to go for a bachelor party. How wow. was it? It was the worst three days of my life. <laughs> really? What yeah. What made Ibiza so bad? I've only heard good things about Ibiza. Ibiza is the shittiest place on planet Earth. It is a cesspool of people from Manchester, mm. Scotland, People that have not seen sunlight since they were born. And they come down to Ibiza and they let their pale skin just fucking roll out. No, I'm not exactly a tan well, I was, I was tan gonna man say, myself. I mean... But but I'm telling you, it's the they're just it's heinous looking people raving, we gotta... drooling on drugs, like cracked out of their minds listening to this insane deep house music the bathrooms are disgusting the food is horrible well these are the people that you surround yourself with who are friends who want to go to Ibiza so no no nobody wanted to be there we just the, <laughs> except the guy who who's getting married all right so you were kind of just doing him a solid by showing up yeah but you know that there's absolutely people from Manchester who are like it was a fucking they love it well, they were like, there's fucking redheaded Americans just showing up here with their white bodies. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I was doing them a favor. I was more attractive than them. <laughs> they were lucky to have me. I improved the view. I made me. it better. When they left, they were like, man, it used to be such trash. But then there were like a couple of Americans there that look proper posh, you know? And we like this one bloke is ginger, right? He, he had a jawline that I've still got burned into my brain. That's what they said. What are your what are you when you look into the mirror in the morning? What are your daily affirmations like? It's like don't worry about it. <laughs> That's what I say. Because I could only imagine, <laughs> based on this podcast, what you talk, how you talk to yourself. No, I'm not that vain. I I play jokes about it, but I'm very insecure. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's all kind of a cover up. Insecure is not the right word. I'm very. Uh... I have a lot of like self doubt. I guess that's insecure. Well, how do you do? How does that mix with comedy? Well, that's what you talk about. Oh, so you kind of use it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it makes you relatable. Got it. And, and you know, makes you vulnerable. I didn't know if maybe you hid it when you did stand I'm up. I'm not some warrior up there. I, that would be like a fucking... No, like you'd a be like a Spartan. serial killer. No. A sociopath. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just... How do you... Yeah, how do you hide that? Yeah, no, you got to bury yourself. That's, that's the key. Right. Well, more respect to you, man, because that's... Uh, Something you, I don't know that I could do. You don't do stand up. I don't do stand up. I, you know what, I, it's I've I've always kind of wanted to just to see if I could, but I've never actually put anything together and actually like done like an open mic or anything. Yeah. But I am that asshole who, after a comedy show, I'll be like, I, I I easily could have done that and been funnier. Yeah. And it, I say I, that after NBA games too. Well, yeah. But then you go out there and you stand. WNBA games. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's, uh, yeah, it's like the WNBA is like Spain. Oh, there it's we like, go. Who, nobody's going there. Nobody's yeah. watching it. It's not, it's not good anymore. It used to be good. Shami Cold's Claw. Oh, is that, is, that, is that how you say that? Dominique Wilkins. It might have been a guy. I absolutely was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> We got one more segment we have to do here. Uh, okay. Each week we do a clip of the week. Yeah. And I want to just get this one uh, out there real quick because it's, it's kind of funny and I, I want your take on it. So let's get into the clip of the week. Cool. Next up, Subway Creatures, clip of the week. Week, week, week. All right. So I, I need your take on this because... Wait, did we watch it? No, that was an intro. <laughs> that was an intro that kind of so failed us a little it? bit. Um, but we're going to play it here. Let's guys, let's just pull this up. If we can get volume on it too. (laughs) 
Dude, I'm pretty sure he came. I'm pretty sure. All right, so can you just kind of explain for the people listening who can't see what you, what we just witnessed? Yeah, there's a uh, a gentleman on the subway. Not too many people on the subway. And he's air humping, thrusting very quickly in a staccato-like manner. You could hear from the, the, the wind breaking from his shorts flapping. There how was a flapping he's going. noise. There was some kind of flapping noise. And 40 seconds in, he sort of pauses for a second because it appears there's some fluid in his shorts. Is that his ball sack slapping against his grundle? I don't know. It might be his dick. They Black guys have big dicks. Oh. You know, that's what they're known for. <laughs> that's what they're known for. That in the NBA, which we were just <laughs> talking about. Those are the things they're known for. Those are the two things they're known for. And like maybe the, you know, civil rights movement. That yeah, was you, had to, you had to fucking throw that one in there, huh? Yeah, covering my yeah. bases. <laughs> yeah, you had to end, end it on that one. As long as you say something like that, you're <laughs> safe. Yo, but that's what they're known for. So I don't know if it's necessarily his balls that are just bouncing off his thighs. It might be. It his probably sh- was his dick, his shaft. But I, I mean, there was this slapping noise, and it did look like there was some kind of he did it to completion. Yeah, that's um, bad. Which is impressive. Imagine air humping and not having to do a fucking thing, and that's just all it. Does well, you got to imagine he's he's probably on drugs, right? You I think that's what's going on. A lot on? of guys, yeah, but a lot of guys can't get hard on drugs. Like that's so that's the only thing that I hold me back a little bit. But at the same time, uh, what else is he doing? You know, do people. But here's the thing: we don't know that about like we. Nobody ever talks about the effect of bath salts on erectile dysfunction. <laughs> do you know what I mean? We only know that about like cocaine, right? Like Molly, I guess, or ecstasy. Yeah, those right. are the two right. that people talk about, right? Nobody's like, yeah, man. He, oh, uh, I, I was really, I was having this lovely bang sesh with this really hot chick, and I was on bath salts. Unfortunately, yeah. Immediately, we just go to face eating. You know? Yeah, you know, it's like so. So he could be on something we've never even heard of that does not prevent him from getting erections. He was on the Viagra. And, you know, it just had some kind of reverse effect yeah. where he's just now fucking air. He's fucking the air. Yo, have you seen MacGruber? Oh, my God. It's, yeah, it's very underrated. That, that very is underrated. what he does in that movie when he's, like, in the graveyard. <laughs> I'm going to shoot. And the, the, and the... I shot. <laughs> So funny, dude. <laughs> that movie is fucking hysterical. It's and you have to be really stupid to enjoy it in the moment, but it is. I bought it. I went out and Will bought Forte it after I watched at, it. At his finest. Yes. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> the scene that you're referring to. Yes. My, yes. But, the graveyard you know scene. <laughs> there it is. That's this guy. That's our do, guy. Do we have the volume? Imagine trying to get through that scene with him. How many times do you think <laughs> she broke my Rudolph? I think they had to. That's why most of her face is not in that, yeah, that right. one scene because they couldn't. They had to use the, the alt right. camera angle. So that, that was exactly what I was thinking about when I saw that. You know what? That, that is a great somewhere. analogy. Yeah. Um, I don't really know that, you know. If it's in a metaphor, analogy, simile, any of that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah I, I don't know if there's anything better that could represent oh, 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 what yeah. we watched. So anyone who watched MacGruber, the the, uh, the clip of the week was a good, you know, that yeah. was a good representation. Yeah. Do you guys do you guys offer your own worst subway stories? Oh, we've been, yeah, we do it. And we, we do you have one? I have a couple. Oh, I, I want to hear I, you I guys. Mean, I mean, I got to hear, hear this. I got to hear this. Okay. 
One time, um, I was on a pretty crowded, well traveled train, probably like the probably like the four or five on a weekend, and it was middle of the day, noon, summer day, I think, spring, I don't know. It was packed. Kids everywhere. And a homeless guy who was sitting at the end of the train on one of the smaller benches that only seat two people like woke up from a stupor, stood up in a rush, fumbled with his drawstring, pulled his horrible dick out. It was so bad, his dick. Was it like an ashy dick? It was just like, uh, it was like uncircumcised and barely human. Gnarled would be a word I would use, maybe. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. uh, I'm painting a really vivid picture. It was a disfigured penis. And he started peeing uh, across, like a looping pee uh, into the seat across the way. Okay. Like all over it. It's funny because we had Jerry O'Connell on the show last week and he told a very similar story. And I just think it's so funny how that's almost everyone's go-to story. I almost wonder if it's the same guy. But... It might be. It might be. This Who guy, knows? so he, the thing was, it made me mad for two reasons. One, there were kids everywhere. And they were like 10, 9, little girls, cute kids. Are you fucking serious? And they're watching. This is Jerry O'Connell's story. He was with his two girls. This could be the same fucking. I'm not, I didn't listen to this. I promise I'm not just ripping off his story. I'm telling a true story from my life. Go on. I'm sorry. It's so, just blowing my mind right now that you guys are telling the same exact fucking story. I think it happens more often than you're giving credit for. Yeah, not at all. Not that, at all. That's sad. And lends credence to Kim. This idea dick that sounds LA familiar. This um, dick sounds very familiar. Yeah. So he also. Yeah. So uh, and the other problem was like it made you realize that the seats that we sit down on that we don't even think about how clean they are are so fucking just doused oh, in yeah. horrible shit. Do you sit on the train? I do. You For, do. As when I can, I give up my seat and shit. But. I gave up I gave up sitting a very long time ago just because I do get these videos yeah. all day, every day, and I see what happens on them. And first of all, we've said it a million times on this show, you never sit in the corners. Oh, really? Because that's, that's the highest percentage of- Those are homeless shelters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's, you're definitely sitting in something. I, I, listen, I, I, it blows my mind when I see women who are either in dresses or skirts or short shorts where they're actually exposed to this stuff. The backs of their thighs. Yeah. They're going to be covered in zits. (laughs) Covered in zits. They're, those are not zits. No. Those are definitely something. Pus pockets. Yes. Probably. Pus pockets. Definitely. pus, Pus. Yes. It's gross. Um, Jeez. did you have another story? It sounded like you had that one was one. bad. I had that another, is bad though. I had another one that was like weirdly. I I almost thought I was gonna end up fighting somebody. Oh, I got a, f- a bunch of stories. I'm gonna, let me pick the best one though. Um, one time I did something good. Uh, there no was one no one wants to hear that one. Yeah. Okay. Forget that. <laughs> um. No. Honestly, if that's your best, if that's the next best one, I definitely we should no. Play. I think I want to tell you this one. So. Okay, another time, got on a subway, same type of subway. It was also somewhat crowded, but not terrible. And then, you know, there's sometimes like a little bit of a pocket of space in front of the sliding door to the next train. Yes. There was a youngish black guy standing there, and I sort of pushed over, and I was still only like, I don't know, two feet from him. And he goes, don't come over here, man. And I was like, oh, what? Sorry. And then people were pushing in behind me, and I kind of got jostled a little bit closer. And he goes, if you step another foot closer, I'm going to punch you in the face, man. And I was like, what, what, what are you talking about? What's your problem? And he goes, this is my personal space. There's no more space over here. Like, it's not that much to ask. And there was so much space over by him. <laughs> there was so much more space i don't know if he was like brand new to new york but there was so much plenty of space now this is where fight or flight kicks in and what do you 
What I'm is going a, through your I'm head? I'm not going to fight that guy. No, not fight. But you know what? I think there comes a point where someone's been in, in New York for so long where they're just like, you know what? Fuck this guy. Yeah. You know, and I've had a couple of people on the show before who have actually had that kind of mentality, which I agree with you. I don't, I don't know that I could necessarily take that route because, you know, what am I going to, you can't fight crazy. Right. But I think there does come a point where you're like, you know, enough is a fucking enough. This is right. so, so what is going through your head at this point? Because I get that feeling where I'm both enraged but I'm also, I'm like, is today the day that I die right. over fucking personal space like this? Yeah, exactly. It's, um, I start to feel hot. Yes, yes. I feel really hot yes. and uncomfortable. And I'm like, oh God, this went so much worse than I thought it was going to go. How did it play out? Did you just? Uh, well, I sort of just turned the other way and like slowly kind of like sh put my headphones on. Yeah. And then he and I like shook my head like because someone else nearby was like looked at me like, yeah, what, what's this guy's deal? Because they'd seen it. And then he kept yelling at me. Yeah. He was like, oh, yeah. He was like commentating on what I was doing. He's like, you're just going to turn your back. You're going to shake your head like you didn't know that was your fucking fault. And like berated me. And I just didn't even turn around. So I had a, a, a kind of a similar story where i was i was on kind of a crowded train and you know there's the long benches where people are sitting there's a guy sitting with i guess it was it might have been his wife or a girlfriend he just referred to her as my girl so i don't know but i was holding on to the railing over them and i had my earphones in very low so i could kind of still hear and I, I looked down because I saw him looking up at me like, and his mouth was moving. So I turned the music down even more. And he goes, my man, I'm going to ask you once, uh, back away. I don't want your dick in my girl's face. And I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? I'm literally standing like everyone else on this train just holding onto the bar. So I took my earphone and I go, what? And he repeated the exact same thing. And so I just kind of like shook my head and put the earphone back in. He gets louder. My friend, I'm going to ask you one more time. Get your dick out of my girl's face. Yeah. And I go, dude, I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. And I like kind of just turned around. And that's honestly how it ended. There's there's no like, you know, climax to this story. That's how it ended. But that reminded me like sometimes you're just like, what the fuck? Like, what do you where do you want me to go? What do you want right. me to do? And it happens a lot because people are just trying to intimidate you. Yeah. And, you know, if, if, if you give them that little inch, you know, they're going to take the mile. So I'm like. It's just the thing is, is that it's it because those people aren't the crazy ones necessarily. Oh, I called this bluff. I mean, I was listen, I was scared as hell. Yeah. I was like, again, am I about to get into a fight over just standing on the fucking train? But, you know, it's like, uh, thank God. I called his bluff and he didn't do anything. Right. But that that easily could have been a different story. Sure. And you just wonder why he hasn't readjusted his expectations for personal space if he <laughs> lives in New York. <laughs> right. You right. Know? Especially yeah, especially in, in the case of your your story. Also, your not guy. for nothing, if I went to Tokyo and I was on a super packed subway, I wouldn't flip out at the locals. I would just think this is the amount of space well, you've they seen, deem reasonable. You've here. seen how they pack the trains yeah, there, right? It's insane. They actually hire people yeah. and their job Packers. is to pack people into trains. Right. I mean, we've showed videos on that uh, on the show before and that is listen if you're claustrophobic you know that is your absolute it's the, fucking yeah. nightmare um but yeah man those stories i mean if if you're a tourist the stories that you're telling i mean that's that's a little traumatizing right. for you but as us as new yorkers you know we, unfortunately there comes a point where you start getting used to it yeah um yeah. all right man well listen this is the point of the show we call it shameless plugging where, you know, you tell the audience where they can find you. What do you have coming up? Uh, what do you got going on? Sure. And I definitely want you to start us off. And if you, if you want, you can, you can plug Kim as if you're Kim. Okay. I'll Your do call, that. man. Yeah. So I'm, uh, you check out oops, the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, everywhere that you can find podcasts. Um, I'm at Zanies Nashville on Thursday, September 26th. 
Tickets for that, francisellis.com. And finally, my Instagram, Francis C. C. Ellis. Twitter, Francis C. Ellis. There was a typo. Uh, Kim Congdon, very funny comedian friend of mine, at Kim Congdon. <laughs> at Kim Congdon on one of the platforms and at Kimberly Congdon on the other platform. You could also listen to her uh, podcast, Broad Topics, which I co-host with her. And uh, check out Stone Science, her web series with Sarah Weinshank, where she gets high and uh, teaches comedians how to do science experiments. That Listen sounds good. Alex. Yeah, it's actually a great concept. Rick, what do you got? So uh, we say it every week. Subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh, you check out the Instagram page, Subway Creatures Pod, for podcast highlights and bonus content that you're not going to find in the main account. You can get a 14-day free trial on GasDigitalNetwork.com using promo code SUBWAY. That's You're going to get every other podcast on the network in HD, commercial-free, uh, as well as the Not Safe for Work bonus content that we show where we can't show it on any of our social media platforms. So uh, definitely check that out. Keep an eye out for any of our uh, the music pop-up shows we're going to be doing in the Subway. we got a whole bunch of those coming up. Uh I want to thank you again, Francis, for stopping by. Thank you, this Rick. This is not going to be your last time. I'll oh, tell I you that. As long, it, as, you, as long as you're down for yeah, it. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. No, we'll definitely do this again. Uh, thank you, uh, Mike Shepard. Big shouts to you for getting us some extra content today. I really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, thanks, Kim, for coming, even though yeah. she had to leave a little early. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. <laughs>